Pirate Postal here. So today we're taking out, well, we're taking out one of the quintessential planes in World of Warplanes. And maybe just in general. This is a tier 8 German heavy fighter. This is a 262. Um, it's incredibly fast. I guarantee every single one of you who first ran into a 262 when you're flying around your tier 7, whatever the hell it was, um, ran into one of these and said, what is that? Tier 8 makes a huge jump in speed, doesn't it? Well, it does when you're going down the German heavy fighter line, that's for sure. Um, I quite did not like this plane when I first got it. And that salvo that I just did is exactly why. Let's see, can I get the... No, all right, cool. Um, mainly because I wasn't using the guns correctly. So this has four 30 millimeter cannons, all kinds of frickin' damage output, right? You also have, as you saw me put a salvo of air-to-air -air rockets there, um, you have air-to-air -air rockets. So it's really stupid to go head-on versus a, a 262, just as an FYI for any of you that are new to the game. Don't do it, you will regret it. Uh, but a couple things that I was doing incorrectly when I was playing the 262 the first time a couple years ago. One not aiming the guns properly. These are huge cannons, right? 30 millimeter cannons. You can hear the ch -chum, ch -chum, ch -chum, ch -chum. Um, You need to aim further out. If uh, the larger the caliber, the slower moving the projectile is, the, the more lead that you need to give. My mantra is, and I don't always live by this because I'm not as good as I uh, portray on YouTube, but when in doubt, aim further out. And you can see, when I'm aiming directly for the airplane, I'm missing all these shots. I need to aim further forward, there you go. And I'm actually hitting my shots, it's amazing. I didn't learn that very well when I first went down this line. The second thing, probably the most important thing, um, is how to play this airframe. This is not a turn fighter, by any means. You can turn like I just did when you know you're going to be able to stick or you, you're under the assumption that you're going to be able to stick with the plane. I will not be turning with the turn fighters, with the A6M2s and the A7... Like any of the turn fighters, you just don't do that. Maintain your speed um, and always have a little reserve of speed available just in case. I typically have at least five seconds available of boost if not, uh, engine cooling in general. Let's see if we can get some good hits on this eye up. Let's not crash into the ground. Whew. <laughs> uh, get ourselves some distance. Because the combination of incredible speed and incredibly poor maneuverability means that very often you will overshoot your targets. And you want to make sure that you're giving yourself a decent angle of attack. There we go. Alright, so we've got three of the five sectors here. Um, just getting rid of that ground attacker just because he was readily available. Let's move along. We want to try to get the um, enemy command center at this point. But again, I'm maintaining speed. Maintaining my trajectory. And keeping the momentum going when I certainly need to. Something like the BF-109Z can certainly outmaneuver me. Um, but it can't outboost me. And so, you see, I just kind of fly on up here. Yeah, I'm going kind of slow, but I'm at 12,000 feet. Uh, what is that, like 3,700 meters, something like that. So pretty, pretty high altitude. And now we can get our angle of attack going down here on this set. See if we can't knock him out. At least you've got all your 30 millimeter cannons completely centralized on the 262, so it does allow for some better abilities as far as accuracy is concerned. It means that as long as you're aiming properly, you're going to be doing a lot more damage than on planes that happen to have 30 millimeter cannons kind of spread out. Let's go ahead and see what we can do versus this B-32. This video I made before the uh, B-29 became available. I don't even know how old this video is. Um, I 
thought now would be a good time to show it. I mean, the, the 262 is just one of those, again, it's just one of those planes. You kind of think of it like, um, in World of Tanks, I kind of equate it to the Tiger. Not that I think the 262 is a better plane at Tier 8 than the Tiger 1 is as a tank at Tier uh, 7. But my point is, like, it's one of those planes that when you either, either you... You knew about it before you started playing the game, and you knew you wanted it, or you ran into it, um, and then you realized that you really wanted it. That's kind of like uh, the Tiger one was in World of the Tanks. All right, so that 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 maneuver right there is a perfect example. Yeah, I left the Typhoon on incredibly low health, but turning to try to shoot him would have been the death of me. Too many planes are around. Typhoon obviously can easily outmaneuver me. So let's go ahead and let's get some distance between us. Let's use our speed to the best of its ability. Find the next target. Doesn't matter that the Typhoon is, is alive. Now he just happens to be the next person on my list anyway. But you don't force yourself into a position that the 262 is not going to excel at. You keep the engagement on your terms. As much as I'd like to go for that, well, I better go for the bomber then. I was going to say that that heavy fighter is the um, enemy that I need to watch out for, for sure. But he was moving away, so let's just go ahead and get this uh, B-32 now, if we can. Alright, we've got four sectors now. Still a little bit further out. There we go, that's good accuracy there. Good aiming. It's not the accuracy's fault, it's the pilot's aiming ability. Alright, let's see what we can do here. We've got another bomber behind us. And we're just kind of cruising around here. You know, for, I'm not forcing the situation. I am kind of milking uh, the personal points as I can. Uh, we could have pretty easily gotten ourselves air supremacy here. You'll notice I haven't gone over to the enemy um, command center in any way, shape, or form. We do have Squall Line now, so there are no respawns, so let's try not to die. Now that we've survived this whole time, it'd be pretty lame to die at this point. Everybody's moving away from us, but we can move faster, so we're going to definitely catch up to them. Aim further out. Aim further out. Come on. Oh, well. Oh, hello convenient. Super convenient. Keep on moving here. Let me get this guy. Oops, somebody's behind us. We're just going to keep on boosting. Uh, I need my engine cooling. Who is this minus? Oh, never mind. He's going to stall. I mean, it is a, it is a pocket 262. But the um, altitude performance of that particular plane is pretty poor in comparison to our plane. Alright, we've got another multi roll down here. Seems to be our uh, targets of choice in this particular battle. Oh, come on. Alright, again, I'm not turning with him. Let me get, my, get some speed here. Get some distance. We've only got a handful of planes left. We've only got a handful of seconds left. Yeah, I knew that um, that plane was going to be dead. And it looks like this is going to be the end of the game. And, you know, just nothing crazy over the top in this battle, right? Really just getting back into the 262 and recognizing that um, you, you can't force the situation, right? Not too shabby of a way to get back into it. Let's go ahead and take a look at my assessment after the battle. Alright, so got 13 kills, 12 of those were enemy aircraft, which is what I was aiming for on this particular mission for the B-29. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a plane that I really actually didn't like at all when I first got it. And I can tell you it's because I didn't know how to play 30mm cannons. In fact, in this particular battle I was still kind of, I was off quite a bit with some of my shots. Um, the mantra with 30mm cannons is when in doubt, aim further out. These cannons hit incredibly hard, but because they're larger caliber, the, the speed of the bullets is slower, and so you need to lead more so that those bullets actually will be at this, you know, 
hitting the target at the same time that uh, a, a, a faster bullet would take. Um, this was an all bot battle. Uh, it just flew a battle versus um, nothing but bombers and ground attack humans. Um, and apparently they didn't want to play tier 8 anymore. Um, I highly doubt that's it, actually. I uh, probably just mistimed the, the click in on this one. Uh, but this is, the 262 is excellent, excellent overall plane. The, uh, you just need to know how to play it. <laughs> oh, wow, Postal, there's a pearl of wisdom. Um, the fact of the matter with the 262 is you're going to have your base airspeed's already better than every other plane at tier 8. Um, and your maneuverability is uh, probably one of the worst, if not the worst. Um, so you don't get in turn fights with this plane. If you're flying this plane, what I mean by that is if you're flying this plane, don't try to get into turn fights. I don't know how many freaking 262 pilots I've killed because they try to outturn me. Um, there's not many things that you can outturn in a 262, even specialized. Um, so just don't do it. Focus on your speed. You'll notice a lot of the times in this particular battle, especially in the beginning before I was really like syncing up with my cannons, I didn't kill the plane and I just moved on. Like so you have to, and this goes for any plane, sometimes you have to make a decision. What's more important, me trying to, t to turn with this plane and probably killing myself or maybe getting the kill but definitely losing a lot of speed to where I'm kind of a sitting duck? Or is, is that not worth it? Hint, it's not worth it. Should I just continue to keep my speed, maintain speed, get some hits on another aircraft, maybe kill that one, maybe don't, keep on keeping on, turn back around eventually once I'm far enough away that I can safely turn around, and, you know, kill that plane at a later time, or okay, unfortunately somebody else got the kill, but I did a lot of the damage to it, I'm still going to get personal points out of it. Um, and I'm setting myself, my team up for a win because, you know, they've got the kill. That is literally the definition of boom and zoom. The boom is hitting them. The zoom is going away, right? Um, how many times have you gone against somebody in a really fast plane that's hit you and then they just keep going, but by the time you turn around to shoot at them, they're already gone. How annoying is that? That's how a 262 should be played. Again, my 262 is not specialized. It's not even built for full speed. It has one equi speed equipment item used, and that's it. I don't have any pilot points that are helping the speed. I'm not specialized, so I don't have additional speed. Um, the biggest thing going for me right now is you know, the engine, uh, upgraded engine, and I've actually put uh, mixed control on here as well. The 262's engines can get knocked out from time to time. I don't typically have that issue, but I know that if a plane lets me, if, if I'm shooting a 262 and they're letting me shoot it for more than a couple seconds, I typically knock out the engine. I, it's just another reason why you should focus on your speed, because then you don't have to worry about getting hit in the first place. Um, yeah, that's all there really is to that, right? So there's your definition and how to on a boom and zoom plane. This is like the quintessential boom and zoom plane. And I'm not saying it's the best. It's not. Uh, but it is quintessential boom and zoom tactics. So yeah, if you're not uh, if you're not booming and zooming in the 262, you're struggling. I can't run to it. And I struggled when I first went down this line. When I first got to this plane, I did not like it. I actually stopped playing this line for a very long time. Kind of like I did on a lot of different planes. I didn't continue playing it until the next tier was on discount. And then I finally went to the, the HG2 and, and fell in love with that plane because the guns are slightly different. We could talk about that at a different time. But I hope this opens up some eyes when it comes to what the 262 can do if you're struggling. Um, this, game, this plane, uh, excuse me, this match wasn't the full potential of this plane because keep in mind I'm just going for enemy aircraft basically. Um, then again, it's also versus all bots, so maybe just going against enemy aircraft is the best thing to do versus all bots to help the game last longer for me. Uh, my skill set versus all bots typically leads to a very short battle. Um, so yeah, yeah, again, really enjoying the, that I've bought back the 262. 
um, and enjoying my ride at tier 8 with it. Hope you enjoyed this particular video. If you're having struggles in the 262, hopefully this helps. If you've got any additional questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can reach out. My Discord is the best place to, to reach out to me since I've always got access to Discord. Otherwise, you can send a comment uh, down below and I'll respond as soon as I get the opportunity. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.